because I was just like diarying all the time. Yeah. BRB, bathroom. BRB had all this yogurt. <laughs> Gonna make some brown yogurt. Ew. <laughs> time out. It's really sweaty. Swamp ass. <laughs> You know what I heard? Someone say that it's like soup outside, which is perfect because it's hot and like really that wet. That makes sense. Soupy. It's soupy. My underwear is like soup when I walk outside in this weather. Yeah. I brushed my hair for the first time in like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Ew. Ew. I didn't realize that you have to do that often. And But you've had long hair for such a long time though. That doesn't make any sense. You it's should It's been like know. months. When you brushed your hair, did it like, was there like a thousand tangles that were in the brush and you were just like... It felt so yeah. <laughs> hey guys, it's Stu Ann. This week's vlog is going to be an interview with Dylan because oh. I've just been so blessed to be surrounded by me. <laughs> incredible people who are all like doing things and all just yeah, incredible and inspiring. And he is definitely one of them. I hope that you enjoy this and okay. And I'm gonna talk to you. Uh, for a long time now. Do you not see all those rolls? How dare you, he's thick. <laughs> he's not bad, he's thick. I just wanted to interview you because I think you are an incredible person. Thank you, Dwayne. I think you're an incredible person too. But I'm gonna take your compliment and not return it to you next time. Okay. <laughs> um, but. Seriously, you are not even 25 years old and you've accomplished so much and you've experienced so much in life. One of which I really wanted to ask you some questions about because it's mm -hmm. so incredibly inspiring is starting your own business. Well, you know, I can start by saying uh, in the least that I was kind of blessed enough to start a business because of everything that's happened in my life coming up to that point. And the people that I've surrounded myself with in general I think that in creating a good team, we were able to create a business and that has been really circumstantial. So I think in being able to do that, we were very lucky. I ended up coming out of college knowing that I had a passion for brewing and seeing the kind of benefits of it as a business um, as well as something of a passion to me I thought it could be an interesting business enterprise for me in my current stage of life. You know, you come out of college and you kind of, you, you want to have something, a stable job, uh, working with friends and knowing what you want to do. And so this was really the opportunity that we took to do it. So our business, I guess I should say, is called All Lies. Um, and we're a meadery, which makes honey wine. And I have been brewing that for very many years now. And when I was in school, I was brewing it in the dorms. I didn't know that. Yeah, I was doing it in the Wait, closet really? of the oh dorms. Oh my God, that is so funny. Illegally. Um, <laughs> don't tell the police. Okay. Um, and so I was doing it in there as a way to drink underage because I didn't want to get a fake ID. And I realized that my friends actually quite liked the product that I was making. And so Doug and I, who is my business partner, kept communicating back and forth and brewing and drinking and brewing and we came up with this recipe that we both really liked. So I'd been brewing that for a while and you know out of college I was looking for work you know in the immediate area to keep my mind occupied because I also do acting but acting is interesting because you can go for months or years without working right. So it can get really boring and you need ways to occupy yourself at the same time. Magnus, that's a rose bush. Don't eat that. <laughs> so I actually went over and I started working at a distillery because I wanted to learn how to make Kentucky bourbon. I went over and I worked at Kings County Distillery for a little bit in the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Uh, and I really learned the business of brewing there because I figured that if I could know the business, then I could have one day potentially on my own. And then after I worked there, I called up Doug and I said, hey man, you know what, let's just take a leap and try and do something. Even if it's small in a little garage where we're making 50 gallons a week, you know, let's just try and do something. And, uh, and he said, all right. And he kind of packed up his bags. He flew out to New York from California. He slept on the couch 
and uh, we really started pounding the pavement. That's like a dream, like, hey buddy, let's do this together mm -hmm. and have him come out here. Well, it's really amazing. I mean, you know, Doug's like a brother to me, so. And the funny thing is, is that I said we've been brewing for many years, and we had, and I think we were always talking about, wouldn't it be cool to own a brewery? Mm -hmm. Like to brew professionally, to do this. And I think we had always fantasized about what it meant to be like a brew master a brewer and I think we considered it way down the line because you just assumed that you know you can't really make those moves until you deserve it to some degree and so I think when we both told ourselves that we deserve to be doing this and we should give it a try he was like fuck yeah I can get behind that um, and so he moved out I think that mosquito landed on your arm no he moved out and we started pounding the pavement and we started by looking for real estate and we were walking around on foot looking for commercial real estate and we didn't have anybody helping us and that's a big mistake because you really need someone to write up a draft of uh, a lease for you. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just go around and be like, hi, can I have this? So when I finally bit the bull and I asked for help, I asked a friend of mine who was a businessman and I said, do you know anybody? And he said, yes, I'm gonna set you up with a, a liquor lawyer I know out in Portland. And so I met this guy named Riley Lagason. And Riley immediately had a web of connections for us. And I think what was nice to find out was how helpful New Yorkers and people are once you ask for help and also when they know it's uh, there's a little money in it. <laughs> but a lot of people have just helped us off of our passion alone. Um, and that's a pretty incredible thing because they think that putting in that investment will return to them later on. And I'm confident to say that it will. Now that these people have helped us get to where we want to be, I think it's only a matter of time before we help in return the favor. And then things just started falling into place for us. We really ended up assembling a team, including Matt Kwan, who's our third business partner. And we got into a position where people were starting to talk about the business. People were starting to taste our stuff. Sommeliers started to taste our stuff and really loved it. I mean, I think in general, that was something that really kind of uplifted our spirits a little bit um, and helped put a backbone to us. And you're like, we have a good product. It was for a while we were just saying it and then, you know, no one really knew if that was true or not. So when they finally started tasting it and, and you know, developing a taste for meat as well, that's something that's really important to me. So now we are about a month and change away from opening our, uh, our business, opening up the brewery and bar all wise in, uh, in the William Bell Hotel. And that is incredible. Like, yeah. Even people who are like thinking about that happening, I feel like I see a man in his 50s. You know what I mean? Like finally opening their business and look at you like in your 20s and you're doing it. So well, just, it's, it's like, really funny that you say that too because I mean, at the same time, we've also had to deal with a little bit of a little bit of trouble in that respect, mm -hmm. right? Because we are by far the youngest brewers in the United States, actually, of mead specifically, but I believe in general as well. And definitely young on the business owner. Uh, perspective. So you're saying people don't really take you seriously or? The, that risk is certainly present, yeah. right? I think that like you were saying, people assume that, you know, you open a business when you've had 30 years under your belt. Yeah. yeah. Um, now we've had, you know, eight years of brewing experience, which is certainly formidable. Some of that being professional brewing experience. And, and, uh, and I think that that is enough as well. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's just a perception thing too. And really, at the end of the day, if it's if it's a good product, it's a good product. That's really all that counts. Well, I am so incredibly proud of you. Like, Thanks. just think a month from now that it's going to be open. And It'll be crazy. And you've been waiting for this for so long. It's been about three years now um, since the kind of planning phase yeah. uh, to completion. And it's also going to be a good excuse to get all my friends together and drink. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every day you're open every day so exactly <laughs> so I mean at the end of it all I get to kind of go from home and see my friends every day yeah so. well that is quite the story Dylan I, I think that that is just so inspiring to like anybody whether they're 15 or 18 or 50 years old and they're thinking about starting something 
and it's just like nice to hear people's personal stories and like okay maybe I, I should agree. go after that well thanks I'm, I'm you know I'm really proud uh, we still have a lot to do so I can't quite say how it's gonna feel when we finish but I will say that I think a big turning point for us was actually like I said before prior was just saying let's fucking do it yeah right it's really the first step through the door because actually you'll find that once you step through that door you can really accomplish a lot in a short amount of time and especially if you're willing to ask for help I have learned an invaluable amount of information just by talking to people becoming more social and, and networking is something I'm not really great at, but trying to learn to network and be great at it has helped this really become a reality. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for any business. What would be your tips for success for anyone who wants to start something that they've, always, they've been wanting to try? Try to build a good team, mm -hmm. right? If you're gonna work with others, which you should. And building a good team is knowing that you are not good at everything. It's kind of knowing your own weaknesses and knowing your strengths and filling those weaknesses with people who are a lot better at those than you are. Be ready for the finished product to not be exactly what you think it is. And that you gotta be willing to make a lot of concessions, both with money, both with uh, concept, time frame. You gotta be willing to cut corners and find creative measures out of all of that. And my, probably my most important thing, I think that I've been doing is really just meeting in person with people. You have to meet with people, even if it's your team, once a week, sit down, schedule something out, and do it in person. Because it's really, really hard to, to do it online, and it's hard to bring yourself to do it. Um, but if you do it in person, you'll find that you'll get a lot more done. You wanna go inside? <laughs> do you have a positive quote that you would like to share? Life is like a box of chocolates. Oh, God. Um, you really can make a business out of what you want to do, even if it's a stupid fucking thing. <laughs> and I mean, that sounds silly, but like, people look at Mead sometimes, right, as a stupid fucking thing. Uh -huh. They're like, that's a stupid alcohol. <laughs> um, I really love it. And then when you bring that same amount of love to meetings, you can make it happen and you can really make a life out of it too. Beautiful. Namaste. <laughs> hey guys, hey this guys. has been another episode been another of episode. Joanne's Roundup. <laughs> uh, is, that, is that the name of your, your no, the series? No, but it should be. Hey guys, thanks for watching the episode. And I hope that you enjoyed it. Whatever of the interview series. <laughs> I hope that this inspires you and pushes you to do more. You can always do more. I love you, I love you, and I will see you next week. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>